this week. We're starting a, uh, we're continuing in our series. Kids, you get to stay in. I didn't exactly plan it this way, but with the title of the summer, sermon, I thought that this kind of this kind of works out well. We're still in the commandments um, with our series, uh, "Pride, the Root of All Sin," and we're looking at pride through the lens of all the commandments. And we've went over a couple so far. We've went over how we're to have no other gods. We've talked about no idols. We've talked about not misusing the name of the Lord. We've talked about remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. And today we're talking about mom and dad. Today we're talking about mom and dad. And <laughs> parenting is, uh, is great. I'm still relatively new. Only six years being a parent, so still relatively new, but it's so uh, exciting and amazing uh, how parenting can be. But I tell you, Ashley and I did something yesterday. We went out, had our anniversary dinner, and we took the kids and dropped all of them off at Ashley's parents. Let me say that again. All of them (laughs) off. At Ashley's parents, and we got to spend a couple hours uh, uh, just uh, going out, having a nice meal, and spending time together. And that was great. That was uh, that was wonderful. And you know, parenting is a blast, and it's it's also exhausting. You all know this. Parents know this. But it's also so rewarding. Seeing things, experiencing things with your kids. And you remember doing the same thing when you were a child. And then the light bulb goes on. That's why mom and dad said that at the time. Or that's why, that's why this happened. Which leads to our commandment for today. It's the fifth commandment. And it reads this. We'll have it on the screen here for you. Exodus chapter 20 verse 12. Honor your father and your mother, so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God has given you. It's quite simple. We're to honor our parents. For some, this is an easy thing to do. For others, this might be the most difficult thing you can ask them to do. It might be extremely difficult. But God's word says it there. We're to honor our father and our mother. So this morning I want to look at this commandment and how it applies to us. You know, I remember when I was teaching youth ministry, I had a group of about, oh, 15 or 20 kids one night. And we were talking And I was relating with them, talking to them and saying, you know, I understand, I understand that you go through a lot. I understand it. You've got some tough things you're dealing with. You've got some issues that you're dealing with. And I'm just talking to them, relating to them. And I said, I get that you feel a certain way. And um, as we... As we kept talking, I started digging, going into deeper issues and reminded them some of the struggles you had were probably the same exact things that your mom and dad had. You know, they were your age, too, at one time. And we kept going deeper and... and, um, I said, the only difference is that you have a smartphone and a computer. Smartphone and a tablet. Then I went to these verses in Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verses 9 and 10, which say this. What has been is what will be, and what has been done is what will be done. And there is nothing new under the sun. Is there a thing of which it is said, see, this is new? 
It has been already in the ages before us. There's nothing new. The only thing that may be different is the circumstances. Our circumstances are unique, but the issues we deal with are the same. You go through the Bible, murder, adultery, lying, stealing, keep naming the sins. They happened in God's Word. They happened in there. There's nothing new under the sun. And they just kind of stared up at me and goes, I guess you're right. I thought, hey, I broke through. I've got to some kids this morning or this evening. But the point, the main point I was driving home with them that I want to share as my first point with us this morning is, your parents have been there. Pride would say not to honor your parents. Pride would tell us not to honor our parents. They don't know what we're going through. What we're going through is so completely different and unique. They don't understand. They don't know. And that's far from the case. Our parents have been through a lot, and we need to respect and honor them for what they know and for what they have experienced. They've been there, done that. They bought the T-shirt. You know, you go, to, uh, you go on a trip and buy a T-shirt. You've been there. You've done that. As parents, you've been there. One of the reasons we respect and honor them is because of their experience. It's because of their wisdom. King Solomon, in all of his God-given wisdom, wrote these words as a parent talking to his son in Proverbs chapter 6, 20-23. He said, My son, keep your father's commandment and forsake not your mother's teaching. Bind them on your heart always. Tie them around your neck. When you, when you walk, they will lead you. When you lie down, they will watch over you. And when you wake, they will talk with you. For the commandment is a lamp and the teaching a light. And the reproofs of discipline are the way of life. Parents have been there. There's been many times. I'll be talking with Zach. I'll say something and... and uh, He'll say he's doing something. I go, I remember doing that. And he'll go, are you kidding me? Are you, are, are, are you kidding me? Your parents have been there. They, they, they have walked in your steps. Pride would say they don't understand. And they never will. So why should I listen? King Solomon wrote again in Proverbs 13, 1, A wise son hears his father's instruction, but a scoffer does not listen to rebuke. If we're not willing to listen to people who have been there, we're heading for trouble. If we're not willing to listen, we're heading for trouble. Listen to these words just down in Proverbs 13, 10. Pride only breeds quarrels. But wisdom is found in those who take advice. Pride only breeds quarrels, but wisdom is found in those who take advice. Are we too prideful to listen? Are we too prideful to listen? Many are, and they show it in their heart. Do we have the heart to listen or are we just too stubborn? Are we just too prideful? God desires for us to have a humble heart, a willingness to listen to those, to our parents, as they share their wisdom. But now I want us to think about the flip side of that. As parents, as father and mother, we need to be parents who deserve honor. It goes both ways. Our point two, we need to be parents who deserve honor. As 
I said earlier, for some people, when you say, honor your father and your mother, it is an extremely difficult thing because their mom or dad hasn't lived honorably. They have not acted in an honorable way. Just because they're your parents, they think they can do as they want. Again, pride has reared its ugly head. Remember Paul's words out of the book of Colossians. Colossians 3.21 Fathers, do not provoke your children lest they become discouraged. Parents should not want to provoke or nag their children. Yes, parents fail. We are not perfect parents or perfect people. There are, all of, there are times when all of us wish we'd have parented differently. Certain situations come up, we wish we could rewind just three minutes, two minutes. We say something, and immediately as we say it, we go, why did I say that? And want to rewind the clock. But we should strive to be the best parents that we can be. We should strive, whether our children are two or 42, We should strive to be the best parents that we can be. Whether we are raising them or whether they're already adults on their own and we can give simple wisdom. We should strive to be the best we can. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 4 tells us, Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. When I say we should be the best parents we can be, if we want to be parents that are the best that we can be, that we can deserve honor, then our parenting should model God. I love this passage out of 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. It says, For you know how, like a father with his children, we exhorted each one of you and encouraged you and charged you to walk in a manner worthy of God, who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. In the context of this passage, you're talking about teaching young believers and using the example of a father training a child. We should be training our children. We should be passing on wisdom, even when they're adults, and sharing with them lovingly. Wanting to see them continue to grow and mature in each part of their lives. We want to be the best parents we can be. Then we instruct our children in God's word and we live it every day. We live it out in our lives and we pass it down. I love these words in Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4, verses 1 through 7. Let me read to you here. It says, Hear, O sons, a father's instruction, and be attentive that you may gain insight. For I give you good precepts. Do not forsake my teaching. When I was a son with my father, tender, the only one in the sight of my mother, he taught me and said to me, Let your heart hold fast my words. Keep my commandments and live. Get wisdom, get insight. Do not forget and do not turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her and she will keep you. Love her and she will guard you. The beginning of wisdom is this. Get wisdom. And whatever you get, get insight. And down to verse 13. Keep hold of instruction. Do not let go. Guard her. For she is your life. We get, in, we get wisdom, knowledge, and then we learn to use it, the insight. As parents, we need to train our kids that way, wisdom and insight. It is important to impart that to our children. It's essential, especially with how this world is today. It's also important how we do it. As we find in the example of Proverbs 31, verse 26. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. 
As parents, we should strive to parent honorably. Again, it's not one-sided. We just don't point at the kids and say, yeah, you're supposed to honor your mom and dad. Well, that comes back on us as well. We need to parent honorably as well. Unfortunately, some people choose not to parent. They, don't cho- they choose not to parent at all. Barely give their kids a mention. So what are those children to do? Well, we continue to follow God's word. We follow our eternal Father's example. Leviticus 19, 1 through 3. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the entire assembly of Israel and say to them, Be holy, because I, the Lord your God, am holy. Each of you must respect his mother and father, and you must observe my Sabbaths. I am the Lord your God. God is asking us, God is telling us to respect our parents. My third point this morning. Honor your parents as a reflection of honoring your heavenly father. If you're honoring your parents, you're honoring God. But listen, I get it. There may be people who's had their mom walk out on them. Their dad just doesn't care. So why should they? I want you to think about it from a different perspective this morning. In Romans chapter 13, 1 through 7, it talks about submitting to the authority uh, of the nation. Paul writes these words in verse 7. Pay to all what is owed to them, taxes to whom taxes are owed, revenue to whom revenue is owed, respect to whom respect is owed, honor to whom honor is owed. Honor to whom honor is owed. Back in verse 1, Paul said, Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. They say that respect is ultimately an extension of God's authority. Listen, we know there are times in office when people are in office that we don't think should be there. But we respect that position. We respect it even though that person may not have earned it. It is by virtue of their position. I found it interesting, these words from New Testament scholar Douglas Moo, who said, Government is more than a nuisance to be put up with. It is an institution established by God to accomplish some of his purposes on earth. Therefore, when we honor our rulers, we honor God. And when we dishonor our rulers, we dishonor God. And that translates to our parents as well. So how do, we, how do we honor them when they may have behaved dishonorably or detestable? Here's some things I want you to consider, I want you to think about. Distinguish between the person and the position. We honor fatherhood. We honor motherhood. If that person fails in that, we still honor the position of father and mother. We learn how the Bible describes God's designs for parenting and we speak well of them, the best we can of them. We distinguish between honor and agreement. To honor your parents, just as God's word says to do, honor your father and your mother, does not mean you may agree with what they do. They may be living a life of sin that you do not agree with. It does not go on God's word. It does not go agree with it. It does not agree with it. But you still honor your mom and dad because they are your mom and your dad. Again, it doesn't mean you agree with their sin. And you distinguish between honor and obedience. If If your parents ask you or tell you to do something that is morally wrong... 
You can still honor your parents and say, I'm sorry, I will not do that because that goes against God. Even while we still refuse to obey, we can still give honor. We don't have to explode in anger. But we can still respect and honor them. This may not make our parents' response any better, but we're blameless in the sight of God. And this ultimately, all this leads to one thought. Our children have choices to make. Our parents have choices to make. Each and every one of us has a choice we make. How do you choose to live? How do you choose to live? Just because your parents may choose to sin and live a sinful life does not mean you have to. You have free will. We've all been given a free free will, a free choice. And we have a choice. We can honor our parents. I love the words of Craig Groeschel who said, Honor is a gift that you give freely. You make that choice. How will you live? Will you be honorable to your children? As a parent, will you honor your mother and father? That's a choice every one of us have to make. But it's our choice. We must make that choice, that decision. I read a very interesting article this week. It's about a lady who didn't give her name. She left it as anonymous as the author of the article. And she struggled with very disrespectful parents. She struggled with them all their life, and she was extremely bitter. And so she finally came to this decision. Now, I want to read to you what she said. It will be up on the screen. And it says this. I do not want to honor my parents, so I'm asking God for the want to. I'm once again reckoning myself dead to the sins of disrespect, hard-heartedness, coldness, contempt, self-righteousness, and unforgiveness, so that I can be alive to God. I'm taking a step in God's direction by taking a step in my dad's direction. And then she went on to quote 1 John chapter 2, when she said, And by this we know that we have come to know him, if we keep his commands. Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commands is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, in him truly the love of God is perfected. By this we may know that we are in him. Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. It's our choice. How are we going to choose to live? Are we going to choose to live honorably or pridefully? They don't deserve my honor. They don't deserve my respect. Saying that as a person who has sinned many times and doesn't deserve any respect themselves. Are we going to be humble? Follow God's word. As it says, honor your father and your mother. That's a choice we alone have to make. There's another choice we all have to make as well, each one of us. We've been talking about honoring our father and mother, mother, making that ultimate choice of honoring our heavenly father by choosing to humble ourselves and giving our lives to him, and thus moving from God's creation to God's created, or God's child. Moving from God's creation to God's child. We have a wonderful Father in heaven. He wants to be your Father. If you don't know Him, He wants to be your heavenly Father. He wants to be there for you. 
But again, that is ultimately a choice you have to make. So this morning, we're going to offer a time of invitation, a time where you can come forward and give your life over to him, a time to confess publicly that you want to make Jesus as your Savior, follow him all the days of your life. You start on the road of repentance and changing how you live to be baptized, immersed, and start a new life again. Why don't you come forward today and do that? Humble yourselves to him and gain the ultimate father, the heavenly father, who wants to be with you for an eternity. Butch, I'm going to ask you to come forward and stand if anybody wants to come forward. If anybody wants to come forward, please see Butch. I'll be up here leading the song. So why don't you all stand as we sing?